In summer 2019, a group called the Young Creatives Board decided to put on a First Friday event in Hereford. This multi-venue exhibition of artwork and performances would have taken place in shops and offices in Hereford City Centre. However, the coronavirus pandemic has put those plans on hold for the moment. But we had commissioned 15 great local artists and still wanted to showcase and celebrate their work. Over the past month, we've been figuring out how to run a digital First Friday. And this is what we're trying out tonight. Over the next hour, we're going to broadcast and share artwork from a few Herefordshire-based creatives. If it goes well, we would like to try it again next month. Um, maybe when lockdown is fully lifted, Hereford could host a regular First Friday. Opening venues on the first Friday of every month to showcase work of locally based artists and performers. The theme of First Friday is well-being. So lots of the work we'll watch is responding to that idea. How we have felt and what we have created during lockdown. The Young Creators Board was established in 2019. The members are all under 30 and we're working or trying to carve out creative careers in Herefordshire. The group is supported by Rural Media and the Herefordshire is a Great Place project. By putting on events like this, we want to showcase the Young Creatives Network of Herefordshire and make it easier for other young creatives to produce work or make a living locally. If anyone is interested in joining or finding out more, please comment during the live stream and one of the YCB will get in touch. Thanks very much and enjoy the show. Why do you care? Why do you care about the marks on my skin, the style of my hair, the rings in my ear, or the clothes on my back? I dress like this because I can. Does it make me less human? With my bright clothing and long matted hair? But for whatever reason, you still care about my clothes and my hair. And I'm not gonna change, no matter how much you beg. But will you? She has no choice. Two roads for her to travel. Two roads completely untouched. Two different directions. Two different journeys. One could be happy. One could be sad. One could be easy. One could be hard. She stands there not knowing which way to go. She could go left. She could go right. She thinks she has a choice, but in reality she doesn't. She weighs up the possibilities, realising she only has one choice. She takes her first step into the world of the unknown, but she knows left is the right way to go. She knows it will be hard. She knows it will be exhausting. There's no turning back now. The other road has gone. She had no choice. She had to do what was right. She had to leave everything behind. But don't worry, she'll be all right. She will be back. The roads will meet up again. She will be stronger, nothing like she was before. She will be able to hold her own. When the time comes, you will see just how far she has come. Please don't be angry. She really had no choice. She would never leave the ones she loves so lightly. This is House Creations, a creative project delivered by me, Tony Cook, during lockdown with staff and young people from Close House. Creative activities each week were sent out on Instagram and Facebook to get young people to respond to what a special place Close House is to all of us. It's a really vibrant youth centre in the centre of Hereford, currently closed due to lockdown, but we wanted to kind of capture that vibrancy through creative activity. I hope you enjoy what you're going to see.
what I gain from Chloe's house. I gain a safe place where I can escape to. The social skills and confidence that makes me good at my job. More self-confidence and support from the staff. It's my job. Um, it's how I survive. Um, I gain fulfillment. It's a job that makes me feel like me. A place where I'm valued and wanted around. It's a safe place to go to and I've gained some amazing memories. A sense of community. I really feel like there's a great community in Close House um, and I love that. I get to be me. I'm a mum of three kids. Um, so I constantly answer to mum, mummy, mum, mummy. Um, but at Close House I get to be Erica and that's that's really important to me. Um, I'm not a chef, a waitress, a drink server, a bum wiper, a snot sucker, dancer, entertainer. I just get to sit and chat with pretty awesome people all day and I get to be me. I gained was life skills 100% and they really helped me on like life decisions as well. So thank you friends and most of all family a place to escape and relax i get a sense of achievement from doing epic events i gain pride i'm so so proud of close house and close house young people yeah i get a real sense of community uh, i get to meet some very interesting young people the reinforcement that that, that young people are incredible um, and you learn that every day and i gain People who are actually there with a listening ear and a shoulder to cry on. going to Close House since I was 13 years old. I'm now 24. So what I give to Close House is my true self and loyalty. 
I give my time to Close House, contributing to the community and the ethics and also contributing my art. Laughter, always happy, smiling, bubbly. Height. My true self as I feel very confident there. I give a loud voice along with a loud piano. I think one of the main things I bring to Close House is laughter. I smile. I think I give my listening ears. When I go in there trying to make everyone else feel the same vibe as me. I make food. My knowledge that I've built up over the years in fitness, dance, boxing, flips and everything like that. Time and my effort towards the epic event. You have my heart, my soul, my time, my energy, my laughter, uh, my wisdom. I give to close out some positive vibes. When I see someone uh, look sad, I always try to make them laugh and also I teach them some perish. I keep the plants alive most of the time. And I give the best turns off. It's apparently I'm the toughest. Creativity um, and a friendly, non judgmental ear. I also bring a bit of creativeness um, with music and art and everything and I love to get involved with stuff. Some cool skills and life skills. My technical knowledge and making sure that everything that Ben breaks is still working. Food munching, banter laughing, games playing, music blasting. Music dancing, epic volunteering, tea warming, high fiving, pads punching, air track flipping, beats blasting, chins wagging, food eating, outside conversations, talking, singing, shouting, but in a good way. Internet using, playing music, spray painting, pool playing, fag smoking, fitness training, songs singing, good making, food making, food having, chill maxing, puzzle completing. Chris jamming, Ben meeting, Tammy cleaning, Levi's mess, Erica chatting, Lucy teaching, Didge dancing, Lauren laughing, Ellie slaying, Levi lazing. Loudly singing, secret sharing, convo shouting, laughing hysterically, singing absurdly, cookie stealing, singing loudly, talking loads, chilling a lot, card playing, graffiti spraying, pool playing, everyone chatting, ears listening, people smiling.
certain evenings this year I've been sitting. On certain evenings this year, I've been sitting with my parents and going through old photo albums, trying to piece together a coherent narrative of my life. I exist in a collapsed present filled with anxiety and quietly sedated by medication that has taken four years to get balanced. I write my life down on A4 paper and commit it to fat troll timeline, one long line stretching 36 years, and who knows how much longer. We sit in the conservatory. The darkness presses up against the windows as we hunch over numbered photo albums. This is when we went to France. You weren't one yet. This is your first Christmas. I look at the photo. We're all smiling. There's so many presents. The photo of me eating the newspaper. Dad got the camera rather than stop me. I can see why. It's a great shot. You had an eye. I liked watching the fish, and I loved my feathered friends, Busby and Becky. I see homemade birthday cakes, Thomas the Tank Engine and Jimbo, walking along the yellow line at the hotel carpet in Yugoslavia, kicking through the leaves. Mum would do her best at answering all my questions. Why was my favourite word. Example, Mum. What's the difference between translucent and transparent? When I banged my head open on the corner of the table, Dad sawed off the corners. He got a Volvo second hand so we would be safe. But you can't protect your kids from life entirely, so some questions can't be answered. When I was four, I started crying. What's wrong, son? It's okay. There's nothing you can do. Try me. I miss Busby and Becky. My dad is Iraqi, my mum's Scottish, praying in two languages to the same God, I suppose he spoke every language. But I worried about religion and the meaning of life from the age of seven. Oh Lord, if you're there, tell me what should I do? How can I please you? What am I meant to do in this life? In the morning, I watched the TV static form shapes until the cartoons came on. Milk and a Jaffa cake every morning, playing conquers and running scared at the kiss chase. I was in a dream. I felt sort of separate to everyone else, but didn't know why or really even notice it. I had lots of friends, I was happy. As I grew up, I was liked, but rejected in love. You're such a good friend and a good person, but I just don't feel that way. I did well academically and basically had a good time, but as time went on, I wondered what it was all for. With no matter romantic promise, I couldn't see a family in the future and understood tacitly that I had to have a good profession. I chose architecture and studied art to learn to draw. The drawing wasn't the main function in the end. I paint abstractly. Lurid greens and deep red acrylics swirled with images of walking into light. The light was an archway, was a door. Into oblivion and oneness with everything, it didn't matter. I'd had enough of my subjectivity. Skateboarding was an escape and the sweet smelling hash that came with it. We smoked in a pipe shaped like a bolt that came apart and went back together. The summer when I was 16 seemed endless, stretching out like a landscape to some glowing horizon. School was finished, we were young and free. I was happy, if a bit paranoid. The sixth form I started drinking tea like a grown-up. We wore suits and played cards. The feeling of not belonging had been exacerbated by the creepy onset of a depression I wasn't prepared for. More and more it troubled me. Why are we here? I looked in Nietzsche, Camus, and other existentialist writers for an expression of this meaninglessness I felt. A woman came in from Concern Universal offering a trip to the Gambia. We would write about our dream, inspired by Martin Luther King's. 
but it could be about anything. What is my dream? I find it hard to think. I hadn't dared to. There was no future. But to see Africa, a right of an agrarian paradise, growing veg, and tending to animals and communal living. What it lacked in imagination, it made up in naive idealism. A friend reminded me later that you can grow vegetables in the suburbs. Still, yes, they got me a place on the trip. Mum called up the tropical medicine department in Liverpool and found the best malaria coverage was Larium. It gave people that took it vivid dreams, and sometimes it caused the symptoms of psychosis. I went out the Friday before the trip to the jailhouse and smoked a joint out of the fire escape, as we used to sometimes. The walls closed in and the surrounding people suddenly seemed menacing and judgmental. It was like they could see inside my head. The next day on the bus I sat at the front. I wore headphones and didn't speak to anyone. I didn't know how to relate to the people anymore. It was like the Sid Barrett lyrics that made me cry in the car when I escaped from Jess's party. Inside me I feel alone and unreal. I muddled through and saw the sights, custard apples and mangroves. We met an animist. It works if you believe in it, the guy told us. In the mark desk scored two pre-rolled spliffs of some craftsmen. I saved them in my pocket. The afternoon we watched a jailer ritual ceremony that I couldn't begin to describe to you, but blew my mind. The evening was marked by the biggest thunderstorm I've ever witnessed. Early the next morning I smoked the joints behind the toilets, went back to bed to listen to my mini disc player. The music sounded incredible, but they were talking about me through the walls. What should I do? I can't get up like this. It'll wear off soon. I got through the rest of the trip and got home with some good photos, a detailed diary and some hazy memories. I was at the start of a thought disorder. Schizoaffective disorder is a disorder of thought and mood. The weed was self-medication for a depression that hadn't been treated yet, but could have been helped by talking to someone about it properly. I finally went to the GP after trying to open a vein with a broken open razor. When the blood came, I was scared. I don't want to die, I just wanted to stop. I took the Prozac and saw the counsellor the first week we talked about my recent breakup with the girl I was besotted with. The second week I showed improvement. The third week I said I was all better now and gave him some green bubble wrap from the post office as a parting gift, which I'd intended to give to the girl who liked popping it for stress. I said there's probably lots of stress in your job. I'll accept this gift in the spirit it was given, he said. My parents take me to Prague to get away. I haven't been able to sleep properly for a week. The Iraq war is starting, the protests are the day we fly. When we get there I see a sticker with a spider with a man's head that says it's better not to be born. I'm hungry and mum buys me a burger from a street stall. It tastes weird. I think it was a rat burger. I'm sick in the street. At a tube station I hallucinate the X standing across the platform. In the hotel after taking my probe sack I can't settle down and but go for a walk. It's just before midnight and I've had a whiskey and written in my journal. I see some people in yellow t-shirts and others the other side of the road in red t-shirts. I decide the red t-shirts are evil. Yellow is the colour of good, so I follow them in. I order an absinthe at the bar. A woman asks if I want to get a room. I don't want to lose my virginity to a prostitute, so, but I don't want to offend her, so I say I have no money. You're lying, she says. I don't know what to say. I leave the strip club and the streetlight changes to a green man, so I cross the road, instinctively. I feel I am guided. Where I'm going I have no idea, but I'm on the right track. I take a leak against some railings and it trickles off the curb and I follow the direction of the trickle. A man comes up to me and hassles me to buy some weed. I don't want it. You buy. Okay. I put it in my pocket and walk on to the night where a woman with red pustulous sores on her mouth says, I give you blowjob. I give her the baggie and she goes off with it. I want to get home but I don't know where I am. All this time I've been carrying a copy of Kafka's The Trial and the manuscript from my beloved novel, which I toss into a bin. The Kafka I give to some Czech students who try and help me but can't because of the language barrier. I eventually get home in a taxi to my considerable relief and also the relief of my parents. Then I sleep for a few hours. We sightsee and stick close together for the rest of the trip and come home. Within a week, my parents call a psychiatrist to assess me. I spent the previous night at a friend's house watching war films all night. 
I jump out of the bedroom window thinking someone is coming up the stairs. I tell my dad the septic tank is blocked due to energy and walk around as if on train tracks looking at the sun's reflection in the windows behind the house. In the living room, my dad has become a law and my mum Christ. I feel the weight of their righteous judgment and painful sacrifice. The psychiatrist tells me to pack a bag and I come down with a razor and a bowl in a carrier bag. I'm a monk going into the world. You'll need more than that, he says. In the hospital, the plants look like they are dying, but I'm told they're well looked after. I'm given a tablet that dissolves on my tongue. I'm in a room where they watch me through the window. Energy is leaking out of the hole in the wall. They tell me to shower, and I collapse on the floor, watching the vivid green shower gel pour down the plug hole. When I'm clean, I'm led back to the bed and repeat my children's story internally with random snippets of Jeffrey Lewis's The last time I did acid, I went insane as a kind of anchor. The fiasco lasts all night until I'm ultimately tranquilized by the drugs and fall into a chemical sleep, no longer aware of the eyes looking from behind the curtain. It was here that I smoked cigarettes, finally, listening to drum and bass for the man who discovered E equals MC cubed and told me Jesus was an extraterrestrial. Finding myself in a psychiatric hospital was a long time coming, but it blew my world apart. Now I really was different. I wonder what proportion of the population stays in a psych hospital. Maybe it's higher than you think, but it's still the minority. I felt like such a fuck up. In reality, there's no shame in going to hospital when you, you're ill, but that's not what it felt like. I would visit that hospital every World Cup year until the cycle finally broke in 2018 with the symbolic hospitalization of part of an art performance I called Acute Ward, the drawings of which are projected in this room, hosted as part of the HCA MA final year show. The stays were getting longer and so were the recoveries. If I kept coming off the meds and taking drugs, the prognosis wasn't good, but on the whole I've learned to live with my illness. Complying with meds and the psychiatrist, as well as having other alternative therapies, anything that might help really. I try and eat regularly and relatively sensibly. I know to exercise and occasionally I even do it. I make sure I get my sleep. I'm married now and content most of the time and I have people I can talk to and a baby on the way which is the reason enough to be sensible and look after myself. I can't live in this cycle of disorder and crisis and blank-headed recovery any longer as I face my routine and try and learn to love getting up in the morning and the idea that one day soon I might be able to work and provide for my family and stand strong on my own two feet. There were times where I nearly lost hope, but I've learned that a better future than, than I could imagine is within reach and it's not going to hurt to believe in it. I never got to architecture school. I went to art college instead. It was a better path for me. I suppose life took me where I had to go. Now I'm working towards a teacher of some sort, in a beautiful house, with a beautiful wife, as the old song goes, and I'm grateful. Give me hope 
me back And I'll call you when the party's over I am when I'm coming home And I'm on my own But like it, like, say it, like it, like that Like it, like that Like a lie, say you like it like that, like it like that. But nothing is better sometimes when we both sit at the bars. They just let it go. Let me let you. Your hands tied, put your eyes on fire. Oh, hands up with what desire you got the bloodlust. But that's alright, we're gonna sacrifice the lamps tonight. So string them up, hose them down, cleanse the light. And put out the candle when they start to light. Yeah, you got the gift of cruelty, but you won't be using your gifts on me. So hands up, hands up, keep your side. And keep me in your mind tonight. Woo -hoo -hoo. Cause you say if you want time me I wish that you let me put my hands on your body I'll make you my baby But I ain't giving in to your lies My body is paradise And yours is the temple of doom The moment I let you in between My legs won't come too soon So hands up and bite your time My body is on mine You got the devil in you You let me put my hands on your body I make you my baby But I ain't giving in to your lies My body is paradise So yours is the temple of doom The moment I let you Between my legs home come too soon So hands up and bite you Till my body is all mine You got the devil in you 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 Walks in your shoes.
you're going nowhere Playing hide and seek with the city streets You got loads of friends But no one to me And something tells me That you're feeling lonely And I know That feeling well But you keep inviting yourself This next one is a song that I really love and it's a cover of Lana Del Rey's video games um, and I just absolutely love it so I hope you enjoy.
Swinging in the backyard, pull up in your fast house in the morning. Open up a beer and just take it over here and play a video game. I'm in his favorite sundress, watching me get undressed, take the body downtown. I say you're the best at singing for a big kiss, put his favorite perfume on. No play a video game. You, it's you, it's all for you. Everything I do, I tell you all the time. Heaven is a place on earth with you. Tell me all the things you wanna do. I heard that you like the bad girls, honey. Is that true? You're better than I ever even knew. They say the world was built for two. Only worth living if somebody is loving you. Honey, now. Swinging in the old bar, swinging with the old stars, living for the fear. Kissing in the blue dark, playing through them wild darts, video games. He holds me in his big arms, drunk, and I am seeing stars. This is all I think of. Watching all our friends fall in and out of old balls. This is my idea of fun. Playing video games. You, it's you, it's all for you. Everything I do, I tell you all the time. Heaven is a place on earth with you. Tell me all the things you want to do. I heard that you like. But goes on Is that true? You're better than I ever even knew They say the world was built for World War II Only worth living if somebody Is loving you And honey, now Thank you.
welcome to my first Friday gig. Since it's a gig, I'm having a beer. So, um, I am Josh Landon, and uh, the good people from Rural Media, Great Place Hereford and such, have asked me to put a set together for First Friday, which I guess you are now watching on July 3rd, which is awesome, so thanks to those guys. Um, cool to do a gig like this, haven't really had to travel far, so yeah, it's interesting. Alright, so the first song I played was Stella by Starlight, and I'm now going to try and play uh, 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 Lonesome by Hank Williams. Let's give it a go. Need a drink for this song.
and Turn Until Michael Cry by Hank Williams, which is kind of a new song for me, and uh, then a solo arrangement of Tenor Madness, which is also kind of new for me, as you can probably tell. Um, but fun to play nonetheless. Right, let's keep it moving. Here we go, Hugh. So, the next tune I'm going to play was actually written very recently, not by myself, unfortunately. <laughs> specifically for quarantine it's kind of um it's been it's been keeping me a little uh, quite busy over the last few months there's quite a lot of challenges in it and it's a really beautiful piece of music when it goes well so hopefully it will be now and i hope you enjoy uh, etude six One more song for you. Right, we've got one more tune for you, and um, this this is a nice one. It's uh, well, they've all been fine. They've all been fine. Thank you for watching. If you've been watching, um, this last tune, I'm going to do a rendition of Thelonious Monk's uh, "Round Midnight," and uh, I really like this tune. I've been working on it for a little while. Thanks everybody, stay safe, good times.
very much, Will. Uh, my name's from Josh Landon. Um, thanks to Perth Friday for giving you this um, opportunity for a set commission. Uh, I hope you're all doing really well over this current, whatever this period is, whatever it is, I, I, don't, I don't even know anymore. Um, if you like what I've done here, um, check out my other projects, Sundown Gas Society, um, The Last Tree Squad, uh, Heron Drone, and uh, my own solo stuff is under J-I-A-L. Okay, cheers guys.